What is up guys, Heath with Lake Champlain Sanitation here. And on this video, we're gonna show you what we do when we actually drop roll off dumpsters. You guys see behind me, this dumpster is on the ground and empty. I literally just put it on the ground. I uh, don't have the tripod with me, but I don't think I've ever talked through how an actual dumpster rental gets sold and then gets delivered and then gets picked up. So that's what we're gonna talk about here in this video starting by basically the first point um, of contact with the customer. So customer will call in, basically we'll explain the pricing to them, we'll explain what can and cannot go in the dumpster. Uh, if it works for them, we close the sale and then we get it on the schedule. We'll obviously ask where they're located to make sure they're in our service area and when they want it to make sure we can deliver it in that time frame, which most of the time is not a problem uh, as long as they you know, don't need it right away, like five minutes after they book, which isn't really realistic. Most of the time you can at least have a couple hours of leeway, if not a couple of days um, before the customer needs it. So that is step number one is actually answering your phone and getting the dumpster sold and this video might sound silly to some of you but i'm amazed uh and kind of surprised i didn't do this video years ago walking you through step by step how you actually sell set pick up and some best practices you should do with your roll off dumpsters because it's all fine and dandy to watch a YouTube video and buy some equipment and get super excited to uh, rent these things. But then what actually happens when you have the equipment and actually have to do the work. So we'll hop out of the truck here and I'll show you guys um, what we do placing this on the ground. So one thing that's nice guys, this is on like a little back two lane road. This house is for sale and the, the truck, as you guys can see, can actually fit in the driveway. Um, if you're in a city, this could be a little bit tighter, but what we'll do is ask the customer where they want it. This customer said, I want it center of the garage. So pretty much um, gonna put it roughly center. Doesn't need to be exactly perfect. I wanted to leave enough room here. So when they swing this door, uh, they could swing it all the way around because it is about a eight foot door on these. Uh, another thing we always do, we always put down these boards. And the reason we put down these boards, I mean, this driveway probably wouldn't really get hurt without these uh, boards. But if you were on pavement, um, it, it could definitely tear up the driveway. And what we do guys is we will put the boards right in this little thing right here. We custom built that on the truck so it can hold like four boards at a time. We typically will only have two in it though. That way they're not bouncing all over the place uh, when we're going down the road. So the dumpster, we back into the driveway. We basically get set up We'll put the dumpster halfway, you know, at an angle, tilt it on the hook. Uh, if you got to roll off, you could do it the same way. Then we spot where we're gonna put the boards down. So like I said, I don't have a tripod with me. Uh, I wish I would have brought it before I thought about making this video, but this was kind of right off the cuff. I said, man, people could probably benefit from this if you're looking to get into the industry. If you're in it already, this is all common sense knowledge to you. But if, uh, if you're not in the industry yet, hopefully this helps you out. So. You get to get your dumpster at an angle where it's close enough to the ground where you can spot your boards uh, and then you put your boards down like I did and basically get the truck away. With a hook lift truck, typically the pressure of the truck in neutral will push the truck away unless you're on a little bit of a hill then you're gonna have to put the truck in drive and uh, basically when you're in drive operating the hook maybe one day someone can come with me and take a video of me doing this exactly uh, step by step but you guys will get the idea if uh, you had a demo of your truck before you bought it from your dealership or if uh, you've seen somebody else operate the truck you're going to get the truck away uh, always have hazards i always have my flashing lights on um, regardless of whether we're in the backwoods or down in our our little city town as we like to call it just a good habit to have your four ways on uh, at all times for safety purposes um, but once you're rolled out from the dumpster i like to get the truck far enough away i'll do a walk around of the dumpster i'll check my wheels again um, just to make sure that I didn't slide off because there has been times that I have came off the boards and had to put the dumpster back on uh, if I didn't spot it properly from inside the cab. With a trailer, this is a little bit tougher to do, um, in my opinion. Uh, with a hook lift, you could do everything from inside the cab. With a trailer, at least to the trailer I had, I was operating it with a control outside of the cab, moving the truck forward, rolling the dumpster back. Um, it's, uh, there, I'm sure there's videos of that on YouTube. Uh, of a trailer set up for someone that runs a lot of trailers. So then guys, what we'll do, I don't want to give away the personal information, 
but uh, we'll basically fold this up. This is just a copy of the invoice and we're gonna go put this in the door jam. So just like this is fine, guys. Uh, nobody's here at this house right now. So that's why we're leaving it like that. If they were here, we'd like to give it to them. Um, but we obviously have all the uh, prohibited items on that list. And also on that piece of paper, guys, we're gonna have, it's gonna say paid because we get a card on file before we drop the dumpster so we can charge overage fees if the dumpster goes over. But what that's gonna have is a list of prohibited items as well as uh, saying that they paid their invoice um, just so they have it for their records as well as if we email it to them. And what's also on there is the delivery date and then the expected uh, term of the rental with the pickup date. Now I say expected because we do allow customers to extend rentals. We typically try to get that on the first initial phone call. Say they want it for a three day rental, but they say um, like this house is being sold. It looks like uh, this wasn't a realtor that booked the dumpster. The reason that we'll do expected is because if they extended the dumpster per se, because they had a crew coming to fill it, uh, another service we offer, you guys can offer too, that's junk removal, that's a whole nother video. Um, if they have family members or whatever coming to fill this dumpster and say they need to extend it a couple days, we'll just charge them a couple extra days uh, and that's it. That way they don't need to go without or get a whole nother dumpster because the, the rental's over per se after three days. So um, just a couple best practices things, guys. I wanted to, like I said, make this video. Um, I don't think I ever walked through exactly from start to finish how it goes. So obviously we're dropping this dumpster today we'll come back in a few days and pick it up what's going to happen when we come back and pick it up is we are going to uh, basically visually look over the top of the dumpster to see if we can see any prohibited items in there because it's much better to catch them at the customer's house and then place them on the side of the dumpster send a uh, text or a call to the customer and say Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, this item was prohibited. Say they have like a, a microwave on the top of it and that's right under the appliances and electronics section of our uh, sheet where it says no TVs, no electronics, no appliances. Uh, they may just forget and put it in there. It's, you know, it's human error um, and it happens a lot. So uh, if you could just pull that item out, put it to the side. Sometimes I'll send them a picture of it and say, hey, I, sorry, I cannot take this item. Or you just send them a text, say, hey, I saw a microwave on there. I can't take that item or any type of prohibited item. Say our junk removal service can come back and get this for you. It will be a separate charge or you can bring it to a recycling facility, uh, um, uh, electronics station whatever you want to do. I like to give them some options, but that way you're not getting to the landfill and there might be this stuff might be buried. So it might come out at the landfill and then you're going to have to charge after the fact. But at least if you do a visual of the top layer of the dumpster could save you some time and uh, hassle when you get to uh, the actual dump. So we got the dumpster visually inspected guys. We'll just say uh, everything's good to go. We'll then, you know, back the truck up, load the dumpster on, then pick up our boards. I always do it in that order. I load the dumpster on, slide the jib all the way to the front if you got a trailer winch it all the way to the front then pick up your boards uh, if you use them then i tarp the load and then we are basically good to go we bring the dumpster to the landfill uh, where we will then dump it of course get, we'll get weighed on the way in dump the dumpster get weighed on the way out if there's any overage which is also on that sheet of paper it says one ton up to one ton included in the given rate so say the rate is 350 bucks 400 bucks whatever your landfill fee is uh, depending on what you charge for your dumpster you can give a thousand pounds you can give two thousand pounds which is one ton you can give two ton whatever you guys decide to market your business as uh, and then everything over that that's another reason why you have that charge card on file everything over that ton or given weight you're gonna bill when you scale out or drive out of your landfill which is why it's so important to be organized and basically have a system and or a software where you have good communication with the customer, everything that you're doing with the rental is upfront uh, because the actual dropping of the dumpster is very easy, but once you have a system on how you sell the dumpster, how you drop the dumpster, how you pick the dumpster up, and then how you bill after the fact, uh, it's uh, generally easy business. It's just um, the market ebbs and flows. So some weeks and months are great. Some weeks and months are horrible, at least from my experience. Uh, but the actual doing of it, once you have a system down, and it's funny, I've probably dropped well over 
a thousand or twelve hundred dumpsters now uh, and the last thousand have been exactly the same way so it's kind of funny um, how simple it can be to somebody it could be very intimidating to somebody else so I wanted to make this video real quick for you guys hope it helps you guys out and I hope it finds you well we'll see you guys next time